Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly, email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, I'm thrilled to be sharing an extraordinary watch. There are days, even at my office, where work can be a slug. Four consecutive three-hand Rolex reviews, for example. And then there are days when I get to share a true exotic with a rich and compelling backstory to match. That's what we have today with this Bulgari Gerald Genta collection, Jefika Safari. Okay, exposition. In 1969, jewelry and watch designer Gerald Genta created his eponymous manufacture. In 1988, on a big game hunting trip with three friends, Genta was inspired to create a watch that echoed some of the imagery of the African safari, so earth tones, uh, soil, vegetation, uh, the furs of the animals being claimed, all of that went into a model that became a pioneering use of bronze in luxury watchmaking, decades before the 2011 PAM 382 from Panerai popularized bronze. The original Jefika not only employed bronze, but also beaded protuberances that marked an early use of steampunk imagery, not just before Jeff Barnes and Vianney Halter in the late 90s, but almost before steampunk was even a thing generally. So if you took the names of Genta's hunting buddies, Joffroy, Fissore, and Canale, and you took the first two letters of each name, you would wind up with this watch, Jefika. And because it is Joffroy, Fissore, and Canale, I'm pronouncing it with a soft French G rather than the German Gefika. But I know a lot of German Swiss who still pronounce this guy's name, Gerald Genta. So use whatever is culturally comfortable for you, Jefika or Gefika. Now, of course, in 2000, Bulgari bought the Gerald Genta factory in Le Sentier from its previous owner, Hourglass Trading, which in turn had bought it from Genta himself. Bulgari waited until the 2010 model year to subsume the Gerald Genta and Daniel Roth collections under the Bulgari name. And for two years, they were co-branded. It was the Gerald Genta collection underneath Bulgari. 2010, 2011, and then no more. It became Bulgari as a brand, and Bulgari is still the factory in Le Sentier today that would service this watch and which manufactures the celebrated Octo Finissimo family. So this company is still very much around. Now, the watch. In bronze and titanium, 46.5 millimeters in diameter. It is a product of the 2000s. The model bowed in 2007. So back then, bigger was better and biggest was best, and it is certainly that. So 46.5 in diameter it is 19.5 millimeters thick. It is 50.9 millimeters from lug tip to lug tip, and 26 millimeters is the spacing between the lugs. And then a sort of alchemy strikes. On my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, you can see the lugs actually aren't overlapping. So the look is designed to be cartoonish, oversized, brash, bold, and unapologetic. And I suppose you could say conspicuous consumption and big game hunting both are politically incorrect. So it kind of suits the character of the watch. But if your wrist is my size or larger, you can actually wear this. So if you wear a Royal Oak Offshore 44, a Hublot King Power, an IWC Big Pilot's Watch, or Rolex Deep Sea, you can pull this off. Big is the style, and again, very bold, borderline offensive, provocative is the look. Now, taking a quick look, this one is full of upscale accoutrements. We have a fully integrated strap of medium rectangular scale alligator leather. It has a folded edge, a monotone stitch. It's black, semi-gloss. You can see that it is substantially bolstered. There's probably a plastic insert at the edge of the strap so that it traces the arc of the case, but it also matches the slope of the lugs. Roll around to the other side. You can see we were already rebranding the buckles here back in 2010 and 2011. We have a double folding titanium deployment clasp. It does have trigger release. The swing arm of one side of the clasp acts as the spring system. Then we have little ceramic spring-loaded pin snaps over time. 
The snappy tolerances are not compromised. Rolling back to the case, you can see the Genta used a couple of devices to pair the visual mass. Even though the watch is almost 20 millimeters thick, the lugs are evacuated in profile. And although the outer bezel measures uh, 46.5 millimeters across the wrist, the inner case back, which, which is significantly inboard, as you can see well here, that is only 42.5 millimeters. So the part that sits on your wrist is 42.5. Everything is media blasted. You can see that the titanium components are media blasted, and then the bronze components are also media blasted, giving it a warm matte glow. We also have a beaded studded crown with a domed profile. There is a natural patina here. This is not human body remnants. This is actually the patina of the metal, which changes its character over time. The dial is elaborate, deeply dished, almost like the Bulgari Amphitheater models. It is very much like that. Outboard, we have a radial seconds hand. We have a retrograding minutes display. We have a retrograding date display. We have a gloss lacquered base, and then each one of these little gloss lacquered sections has a polished metal border to give it an upscale sheen. There's a metal bezel for the jump hours, so we wind up with a bi-retrograde and a jump hour. It is a very animated watch. You'll also note that when I pull the crown, I stop the seconds hand. The underlying movement is a Girard Perigo 3100 that has stop seconds functionality. There's a little pusher on the side. Let's say I want to just jump the hour forward, but I don't want to affect the seconds or the minutes. I just index this little pusher on the side, and that'll jump the hour forward and leave everything else unmolested and undisturbed. And when I turn it over, you can see that movement. They describe this as a potter's gold finish. So we have a very bright yellow gold gilding on bridges, plates, and rotor that are all engine turned. It's built as the Gerald Genta 1004, but again, it is a Girard Perigo 3100 base, which is a very thin high horology automatic that can be rightly compared to the contemporary JLC 889s and Zenith Elites. It's a unidirectional winder with a 45 to 46 hour power reserve, stop seconds. It has a four hertz or eight beat per second rate. You can see it pivots on 27 joules, and it is a adjusted to a high horology five positions. In addition to hot and cold, it's adjusted like a chronometer. You can see black polished screws. You can see satination, including multiple solarizations on the barrel itself. It is a beautifully decorated movement. You can even see that the anglage is quite bright and inviting. It is a Gerald Genta complication module incorporating multiple patents on top of the Girard Perigo base. And if you put this watch on a water resistant strap, guess what? It's 100 meters water resistant, so you are good to go. You can see the Gerald Genta branding still extended to the movement itself as well as the case back. And the movement is deeply set within this enormous game-changing timepiece. The Jeffica is legendary, and this one adds to the appeal of the original with water resistance, rarity, as this was briefly produced, and the complexity of a jump hour with biretrogrades. Reach out to tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.